Welcome to lesson 4 on Jewelry Cam. In this video, we will discuss using a strategy called swarfing. If you're not familiar with it, it's probably because it's a relatively new addition and is meant for 5 axis mills. Swarfing, in a sense, is a way of cutting with the side of your bit. Whereas all other operations are performed using the tip of your bit, swarfing allows you to use it the side and therefore be able to cut straight surfaces and exact angles such as 90 degrees without having to take into account the taper of your bit. Also swerving because it's able to use the side of the bit is much faster than the usual cutting pattern where the tiny tip of the bit is used. In this video we'll discuss a few practical applications of swerving for jewelry. First of all, swarfing requires us to define which surface we'll be cutting, as well as its upper and lower boundaries. For example, if we want to cut this head or object on the ring, we will need to specify this surface and the boundary that is here and here. Because currently these two objects are separate, we have two choices to prepare for a swarf operation. One is that we can union all of this together. Just remember to do this before you select your geometry because union produces a new object and you will need to do it before selecting the initial geometry. Alternatively, if you want to keep your various objects separate, you can use intersect operation, which will give you Two curves and you may you could use these curves instead of the edges of the object as your boundaries or as your edges. So I will perform this operation on both of these objects. Here. Now I have my edges. I'm going to go to custom operations, select geometry, press enter, select my stock material. And now I'm ready to add my operations. So, add new custom operation and select Swarf. Let's begin by cutting the outside of this head. Program asks us for the Swarfing surface, so we select not this but this surface. Enter. Lower lead curves. Press select our newly added curve. Enter. And for the upper lead curves, we can use the edge of the object itself. Enter. Just as a quick show again, if I go to my x-ray mode, you'll see that the actual edge of the object lies below. And if we chose that as our lower boundary, we would cut into the model, which we do not want to do. For our settings, we will leave everything at default, which is something along this line. So clearance of 0, tolerance of 0 0.01, number of layers of 1. We'll click Apply and Calculate, and it appears that nothing has happened, but if we go to the X-ray mode, we will see that we have indeed added a path. Let's see what we can see in the simulator. We will make our workpiece visible here, and Slow down the simulation speed so you can see exactly what happens. So we go down, and now, as you will see, all five axes are engaged as we cut around this particular object. So, let's look at some of the settings that we have in for this operation. We can specify a clearance, meaning an offset, which will make it make it as if the object is larger than it actually is. This is useful sometimes for removing large chunks of the object beforehand, doing a roughing operation of sorts. And there's a number of layers. Layers are counted outwards from the object, and it also simulates something of a roughing operation. 
So for example, if we specify three layers, the option for layer distance will be enabled, in this case 0.10 millimeter, as well as the linkage, one way or two way. One way will keep the mill going in one way, whereas zigzag will change the orientation every time we get closer. So let's change it to zigzag just for interest sake. Apply it, we calculate it, and see what happens within our simulator. So now you'll notice that we come in at the distance away from the object. We perform one operation clockwise. Next operation counterclockwise. And the final operation clockwise again. That's why I meant by the zigzag movement. And now we're done. And our walls are exactly straight. We don't have any tapered angle. And we have a very sharp and fast looking cut. Now, to cut the inside of the object is the same idea. Choose Swarp, choose the inside of the Swarping uh, surface. Just get this right. There. Enter. The lead curve is our added curve rather than the edge. Enter. And upper edge is the edge of the object itself. In this case we're not going to need any multiple layers, so I'm going to set those to zero and click apply and recalculate. Here's our initial cut again. And here is our inner cut. So now we have done the outside and the inside of this piece. Now if we wanted to be extra fancy and cut this top part, this top surface, using the swarf as well, we can do that too. So we select our swarfing operation again, select our surfing, swarfing surface as this top part, press enter. Lower lead will be our inner boundary, upper will be our outside boundary. We click recalculate and we'll just hide these other operations. Let's see what happens now. you'll see that now we're using once again the edge of our bit to create flat surface cut. So in this way we did the entire head using just working operations. This will be very very fast um, because altogether there's only five moves, uh, five, three on that initial cut on the outside one on the inside and then one on the outside. So it'll take a matter of seconds really to cut this instead of going from the top, realigning the mill and then positioning the mill rather and cutting it from the sides. And the same can be applied to any other object. For example, here we have an object with an undercut, a very difficult thing to do, perhaps almost nearly impossible with parallel cuts with the exception of perhaps positioning, cutting, positioning, cutting, kind of a number of indexed cuts. Let's see if we can do this one using Swarp. We will just deal with the inside of the surface. We select our added curve, the edge, and the cut.
and here you go. What would have taken us multiple indexed operations and perhaps leaving some edges where the operations met up, we were able to do in one cut, it probably took a matter of seconds. Let's see. Simulator says it would take us roughly three seconds to complete this. So now you can kind of start to get an appreciation for the power of these SWAT operations. Before I finish this lesson, I want to show you one more thing. Sometimes you get a model that does not have a sharp edge, or perhaps you've imported a model from another program. So you have STL format, OBJ format, and so on and so forth. And you know that the wall is straight, or a certain segment of the ring is straight, but you just don't have an edge to catch. That's quite all right, because you can still use um, a curve to create a temporary edge and use that for your cutting. So for example here, as you can see, we have this slightly curvy looking inside of a ring, um, but we should be able to create a swarf operation nonetheless. You can do that by using various commands such as extract isocurve. In this case I'm going to use that. And can I create a curve that lies right in the middle of this surface. And if you're not able to extract an ISO curve, for example if you have a mesh, you could still use other commands such as outlines, silhouettes, or even just drawing a curve that approximates your object as closely as possible. Once we have this curve, it's easy enough to extrude it without making it solid. We can just make a double-sided extrusion and approach the object. So now that we have our extrusion, let's align it or make it a touch smaller so that it closely, closely matches our inside of the surface. And let us also position our ring correctly so that we know which side is the lower and which one is the upper. We'll go to New Custom Operations, Swarthing, select a Swarthing extrusion here, lower lead curve, upper lead curve, and leave the rest of the options on default and calculate. And here we see our swarf operation being made following the guides of the extrusion. Now, to complete it, we could also reverse our respective and repeat the operation from this side. Once again, selecting our surface, lower and upper leads, calculating it, and viewing both operations.
You can also try the same style operation without adding the extrusion and just using curves, meaning adding a lower boundary and an upper boundary curve. And of course, this would only work if you have a NURB surface here rather than a mesh. However, using this approach without the extrusions, I found that the results were somewhat unpredictable. Um, I'll show it to you as an alternative anyways, and perhaps at some point this might be fixed or changed in the program, but for now, it does not really seem to render good results. So I select the surface itself, a lower boundary curve, and an upper boundary curve. These are just curves that I've added by creating offsets of our main middle curve. I found that two things happen with this approach. First of all, the calculation takes considerably longer, presumably because the program is trying to make sense of this somewhat irregular surface, non-straight surface. And second, you'll see that it makes additional, perhaps unnecessary movements in the uh, tilting of the b-axis. So, let's see it for comparison. And you see that there's a bit of this unusual tilting going on. In the end, it might produce the result that you wish, but I'm somewhat hesitant of all this extra movement and I prefer a sure way of using the extrusion. But feel free to experiment with this and if you find that works, leave a note in the comments for this video. In the next video we will cover the last of the custom operations called engraving. Thank you for watching.